Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to the January 2025 Sky Report. My name is Vanessa, and I am joined today by Patrick. Hello. I'm honored to be here for the Sky Report. And we are going to go through some of the interesting things happening in the sky this month. Let's get started. First up this month, the quadranted meteor shower peaks in the early morning of January 3rd. Interesting fact, the radiant point of the quadranted meteor shower is the modern constellation of Bootes. That's why this meteor shower is sometimes called the Bootes. But the name comes from an older constellation that is no longer used anymore, Quadrans Morales. This year, the meteor shower could be a decent show. The moon sets early in the evening at around 8 p.m. the night before, allowing for uninterrupted viewing during the peak hours of the shower. The radiant point rises just after midnight, so the best time to see this will be after midnight all the way through twilight at 6 a.m. Even though it's winter in the northern hemisphere, the Earth is closest to the sun on January 2nd. This happens because the shape of the Earth's orbit may look round here, but it's very slightly elliptical, which brings the Earth closer to the sun on January 2nd. The sun is farthest from the Earth on July 4th by about 3 million miles more than it is on January 2nd. Contrary to popular belief, the Earth's closest and farthest distances from the sun is not the reason for the seasons. This is due to the tilt of the Earth's axis. On January 13th, there is a rare lunar occultation of Mars, where the moon passes directly in front of the red planet, causing it to disappear for less than an hour before reappearing. The lunar occultation will be visible from the Americas and Africa. The last lunar occultation of Mars was on December 7, 2022. From Los Angeles, Mars will disappear behind the full moon at 5.51 p.m. PST and reappear at 6.46 p.m. PST. Weather permitting, Griffith Observatory will broadcast this event live. Please check our website at www www.griffithobservatory.org for the link to our broadcast. On January 16th, the planet Mars is at opposition. This means that Earth is traveling right in between Mars and the Sun. Because of this, we are at our closest position to Mars for the year, at a bit under 60 million miles away. This also means that Mars rises as the Sun sets, so we'll have the entire night to watch the planet. On January 18th, there will be a conjunction of the planets Saturn and Venus. They'll be just over two degrees apart, so if you bring out a pair of binoculars, you'll be able to see both of them in one frame. They'll also be interesting to see with just your eye. They set early in the night, so catch them quick. To the north, we see the constellation Cassiopeia, the W shape. Throughout the night, it gradually sinks to its lowest point due north before rising again, never setting on our horizon here in Los Angeles. In the south, we can see the bright stars Sirius, Procyon, Pollux, Aldebaran, and Rigel, five parts of the winter hexagon, and the bright star Betelgeuse that sits at the center. Looking east, the constellation Leo emerges above the eastern horizon with the gibbous moon in front of the sickle or the head and mane of the lion. The asterism, known as the Big Dipper, rotates in its upright position as the night progresses, with its handle pointed down towards the ground. As the nights go on, we gradually lose our view of the autumn constellations towards the west. The great square of Pegasus now sits low on the western horizon and will soon disappear from view, along with Andromeda, by the middle of next month. Four planets will be visible without a telescope all month. Here you can see that at 7 p.m. on the 15th, they will all be visible at the same time. You'll want to catch views of Venus and Saturn first because they will set earlier in the night, and then Jupiter and Mars. Here is a spotlight object that we think you should see this month, M35. This is an open cluster located right at the feet of the twins in the constellation Gemini. This cluster is about 3,000 light years away. Close up, it looks like a tightly packed group of stars, but not as tightly packed as a globular cluster, like we'll see in the summertime. This is one of my favorite objects to watch this time of year, so take a look at it with your telescope if you have one, or visit Griffith Observatory and look at it through our telescopes this month. Another galactic open cluster can be found in Canis Major, the Great Dog. You can find it by drawing a line downwards from Orion's Belt to Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky. Located about 4 degrees south of Sirius, the open star cluster is fairly visible to the unaided eye under clear dark skies far from city lights. 
It becomes more easily visible with binoculars when it's high above light polluted areas. Known as Messier 41, this star cluster is about 2300 light years from Earth. It consists of about 25 bright stars scattered over an area the size of the full moon. Canopus is the second brightest star in the night sky. It's often a challenge to see since it's only visible in the southern United States during the winter months for a brief period of time. It is visible in this picture taken from Griffith Observatory. The easiest way to find Canopus is to locate Sirius when it reaches its highest position in the sky near due south. Extend the line southwards towards the southern horizon until you see a solitary star three and a half degrees above the horizon. Congratulations, you have found Canopus, also known as the Great Star of the South. And here is your lunar calendar for the month. First quarter is on the 6th. Full moon is on the 13th. The last quarter is on the 21st. And the new moon is on the 29th. That's all we have for January. Thank you so much for joining us this month, and we hope to see you again in February. Bye! Bye.